Hi everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with EDEC Business School and we're going to be talking about their international BBA. Here with us today we have Angelo Bisagnano, the head of program. How are you Angelo? Hi, great to see you. Great to see you too. And we have a four-year student. She is in Singapore right now and she's called Tina Bieler. How are you Tina? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm fine. Thank you very much. They're here to answer my questions and uh, first we're going to start with the pitch. Okay, <laughs> Angel okay Angelo, it's going to be your turn. You're going to have 60 seconds and uh, you're going to have to introduce us to the international BBA of EDEC. It's your turn right now. Go. Hi, EDEC International EDEC Business School is a top international school, triple accredited, uh, and is one of the schools in France with a long-standing international BBA and uh, with high international um, horizon. There are two tracks within the international BBA, uh, um, both in English. One is the business management in English that is take, takes place in Lille. The other is the global business track that takes place in uh, across three different continents over four years, with students studying in Nice, in Los Angeles, at UCLA, at Singapore with uh, uh, Nanyang Technological University. Um, this at uh, EDEC Business School, we love to learn by doing and to make an impact. Learn by doing means that all the teaching is linked with practice and theory. So students will be able to put in practice whatever they learn and to develop uh, an international exposure. All right, almost perfect. Thank you very much, Angelo, for, for this speech. And first thing first, what could you tell us what is a BBA? So a uh, BBA is an international program where students are able, as, uh, as I anticipated later on, to link theory and practice. So differently from other um, programs where there are uh, the attention is very much on theory, the uh, an international BBA prepares students for the world of business. It is developed in conjunction with companies, in conjunction with uh, different stakeholders, so to allow students to link all the time uh, theory and practice. Students are able to join a BBA straight after the uh, uh, high school diploma, baccalaureate, and uh, they are able to, they spend four years and after that uh, four years, they're able to either enter the world of business or work for international organizations, work for um, uh, companies, uh, small and medium enterprises, big corporations, or they can continue their studies joining a master program. Uh, very in many international renowned master programs as well as uh, um, um, master programs in France. Okay, you mentioned that they can integrate your school after a baccalaureate. Um, could you tell? Can you could you walk us through the admission process, please? Okay, so uh, students can complete their uh, their baccalaureate or their equivalent, so uh, uh, A levels, for example, for the UK, and then they can apply. Application starts pretty soon, November twelve, and they will continue until January. And uh, with interviews, uh, all candidates get an interview with uh, with other of our faculty members in February, and then they can. Um, they will receive a uh, response by, by March, this for international candidates, and they will be able to, um, uh, to, 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 to join. There are two requirements in terms of English uh, for the program that is delivered in Lille for the four years. Um, students will need to have a, um, an English test, the IELTS 6.5 or TOEFL 95. While instead the requirement for uh, the global business program is slightly higher, with students having uh, to have a IELTS level 7 or a TOEFL IBT level 100. This is required because students will be studying in UCLA, will be studying at Singapore with a very highly um, professional faculty, with a highly, in a highly renowned institutions. So therefore, the program is asks for students to be uh, pretty much ready in English by the first day. All right, T can, Tina, can you tell us the kind of students you were? before applying and like what were your marks your grades and how like you how, how did you apply exactly can you tell us so i applied on a dossier so on based on my transcript um i did a french high school 
I did a French high school in Strasbourg. So pretty normal French student in France. I, I did most of my um, academics in France. Uh, so I just applied with my transcript. I had an average, I would say, out of 20 of 14, 15. So pre pretty good grades. And I applied with that and I passed the IELTS. And it went pretty smoothly. I, had, I applied actually in November and in January I got to respond and I was already taken. So it was pretty, it was a really good way is that in January I already got to respond on where I was going to study. So I just, I was pretty chill at the end of the year. I was not like stressing about, oh, in which school am I gonna get in? So that's good. It's very, it starts really early and I recommend all of you to, to apply early. All right, that was my, my, my next question. It's, I can see that there's like two sessions. When is it best for me to apply? Maybe Tina, you can, so Tina, you think it's the, the earlier the better? Angelo, do you concur? Tina? Yeah, I would say the earlier the better. Um, if you know already that you want to do a business school, if you already know that you're interested in the EDEC program, just apply as early as possible and you can apply without doing the IELTS. This is something you can do after they will accept you with under a certain condition. So I applied without passing the IELTS and I passed the IELTS later. So I could just focus on the IELTS and not on my application. So I would say it's better for the candidate and it's probably better for EDEC if you apply early. Yes. Okay. Thank you. for and, the uh, and to add, on, to add on that, uh, uh, obviously, we do have from uh, uh, this year, we also have the opportunity for students, French students, to apply via the Parcoursup platform. So, uh, again, the EDEC uh, accepts uh, applications on both for international students directly on our website, uh, edec.edu, uh, and for uh, students who would like to express their, uh, uh, their desire, their vows on um, over Parcoursup. Okay. So, okay, so you mentioned an interview, Angelo. Could you tell us what it is made of? Uh, could you give us an advice, like apart from being myself? What advice could you give me as a student if I want to succeed in this interview? Uh, be yourself. <laughs> no. So uh, what, is it, what is important is that uh, with the program in English, both programs in English are highly uh, um, uh, competitive. So we really want to create a group of students that will be together for four years. We will create a strong social network, we will create a strong professional network and students who will also um, be in line with the spirit of uh, EDEC, with the spirit of creating future gen managers for future generations. So in the interview, we really have, uh, have the opportunity to meet the, our faculty members, to meet some of the professors. There will also be an opportunity to learn a bit more about how we do things, what kind of uh, uh, ethos, what kind of uh, uh, ideas we do have at EDEC. So to know a bit more about us, and for us, it would be an opportunity for you as well to see what kind of person you are and how you desire to link what you will learn to your life and to be a transformational actor in the future. We would like to not just produce students, produce graduates, we would like to produce talents that will actually transform the world. So we would like to see how you would like to do that. So what is your experience? What have you done in high school? to change the little bit to the, around you, to be the change that you would like to see in the world. Do I need to know what I want to do in life before applying? Uh, this is, uh, a, an international BBA is a journey and uh, uh, many, many students know what they want to do in life. Some others will only discover later on uh, what they want to do. Um, at EDEC, what we will offer is actually a support throughout your, the four years in terms of career, in terms of development of your personal branding, in terms of understanding of what are your main strengths and, and weaknesses, but also what you like and what you are amazing at doing. So over the course of the four years, students will are able to redesign and think very much what they would like to be in the future. Uh, also, all the specializations in the electives offer possibility to students to choose and taste some uh, different areas of business. Uh, was also, at uh, UCLA, students will have the opportunity to have a wider uh, spectrum of non-business courses, just to have an idea more of uh, what they would like to be in the future. Why? Thank you very much. Why should I choose to go to this to like EDEC International BBA instead of? I don't know, uh, an MSc in a university, for example. 
Uh, I'll take this and then uh, pass to Tina. Yes, I will, so I will, I I will ask Tina why she, did, why she made that choice, but first I want your advice on it. So um, in France, uh, tradition uh, says to go to a prepa, preparation course uh, for a couple of years in, in order to get ready for a master for a grand école. Um, this is the tradition approach where there is a focus on theoretical studies, a, th a focus on getting the best of what you uh, already know you would like to become. Uh, an international BBA is an opportunity instead to get more of an international exposure. Uh, our class has 62 different nationalities and has the opportunity for you to prepare more what you would like to do, but also to expose yourself to theory practice to how things change in the world. Nowadays, the world changes, and we see it with COVID, the world changes so quickly and so fast that we need to readapt our careers, we need to readapt our way of talking to people. Look at us today on uh, cameras and uh, uh, headphones. Uh, and the International BBA gives that, gives the time and the opportunity for students to craft who they want to be in a professional environment. And then as well, if they want to continue for a master, at the end of the four years, they can approach, they can enroll into a master. 150 students of our uh, students last year continued on to a master. Others uh, decided to go directly into the world of business or to uh, start their own companies with one of our uh, incubators. Tina, when you made that choice, you were 17 years old. How did you know that that's what you wanted to do and not any other program that we mentioned so um when i was at my last year of high school in terminal um i already had a multicultural background i'm half norwegian half french i already traveled a lot and did some exchanges around the world so i knew that i wanted to study business i didn't know what exactly new business but i knew i wanted to do business and i knew i wanted to do it in the international um aspect so i was already uh, thinking about applying to other countries, uh, to other bachelor in other countries. And um, I also looked at schools in France and I saw this program where I'm able to uh, study in three different continents, uh, but I'm also able to work, have a professional experience in uh, three different continents. So that was really what triggered me to, to join EDEC and this Global Business BBA because it's kind of a unique program. I didn't find it anywhere else in my research, a school that enabled me to study in top uh, university in the world, EDEC for Europe, UCLA for the US, and NTU in, uh, in Singapore, in Asia. Uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. So that, that, that's why I decided to join EDEC, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. How many students, and I'm going to ask Angela, how many students do you admit each year? Is there a limited amount of places? Uh, normally, on the English track in Lille and on the global business, uh, that itinerary uh, program that uh, Tina just mentioned, we tend to have uh, two families of 80 students, uh, roughly. Why? Is because it's the perfect number that allows students to um, gel, to create a sense of community, but at the same time to develop a professional network for the future. Uh, this is not a strict. Uh, uh, this is not a strict number, but it's a number as well that we looked in uh, uh, in partnership with our uh, uh, with, with our um, partners like UCLA and, uh, and, and NTU as an opportunity to actually create the best offer and a group, a family, as I said, that will allow students to uh, develop through four years together. Okay, thank you. Every school has a stereotype, but we're going to dig a little bit closer to the truth and see what lies behind those cliches. I'm going to start with you, Tina. What are the preconceptions? What are the cliches? What are the ideas that you might have had before applying, before entering uh, the international BBA? So I remember when I was in um, high school, um, the professors were always saying, oh, if you go and do a bachelor, what a waste. You're just paying for your degree. It's just going to be like a vacation. It's You're not going to really study and it's not going to be hard. And I would say that it's completely wrong because um, it's quite tough. Like the program is quite tough um, academically, but also like 
you need to really integrate yourself in the city and the country you are, try to make friends, try to find an internship, try to like really enter the, the professional life at the same time and you have homework and you need to adapt also to the way of uh, the academic world. For example, the US, it's completely different the way they study, the way they work than in France. So yeah, that's, I think uh, it's, a, it's a big cliche and it's not true, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a massive cliche. Thank you for and uh, like highlighting that. Angelo, what would be your cliche? Uh, as you know, I'm Italian. I previously worked in the United States, uh, uh, in the United Kingdom, in Italy. I um, I'm an expert in international uh, higher education and know a lot of systems around. It. And when, when I moved to France, one of the key things was, oh, uh, you know, be careful because uh, the international BBA is always compared with the prepa, with the preparation classes. And people believe that those ones are uh, stronger and um, more rigorous academically. Uh, as a professor and talking with students say, on a day-to-day -day basis, I have to say that, and looking at our faculty, the academic rigor of the international BBA is the same, you know, uh, as you will find in a, in, a, in a preparatory courses, especially at uh, Nanyang uh, in, our, in our final year. And uh, uh, at in the in the first year, we do have professors who are uh, top of their top of their discipline in terms of publications, in terms of research. And Nanyang, Tina is studying with who was uh, voted the best professor in the world a couple of years ago. So professors who do research, who apply research, uh, and uh, really uh, demand students a lot of effort. At the same time, though, many of our professors have. Um, uh, practical exposure. At UCLA, uh, students study with the previous uh, director for um, Coca-Cola, um, marketing director for Coca-Cola, you know, so somebody who really worked uh, her way through Coca-Cola, who managed an, a, a global corporation and brings into the classroom what the, she knows the practice is. Uh, same thing for many of our professors here in Nice or in Lille. So yeah, I think that there was the cliche that I uh, uh, that I was lucky to actually discover was not true. All right. So basically, uh, a BBA is not a waste, and it's going to make you it's as professional as academically demanding as any other um, academic um, like um, tracks that you might need to follow. Yeah. Tina, it's you it's tough, and it's tough. All right, Tina, you mentioned the fees and. Um, the, the tuition fees seems pretty expensive and I was wondering how you justify such expense and maybe Angelo first and then Tina with your experience you will tell us how it was worth it. Okay, um, justify the, the fees. These, um, I, I will look at fees like an investment on yourself. Uh, this is some, um, some money that you are taking, that your family is taking and is investing into who you will be in five, ten years down the line. Who you will be five, ten years down the line. So uh, don't look at it like a, a, an extra dinner missed this, a uh, uh, dinner out missed this uh, this year. But look at it at uh, what you will join. You will join a, an international alumni network of 39,000 people across the world uh, studied across the deck and they are all in leading corporations around the world you will gain access to top faculty uh, amazing facilities in terms of both uh, Nice, Lille and our partner campuses in Singapore and, uh, and UCLA. The UCLA campus, the NTU campus are mindly, um, mind-blowing, are, are amazing. And compared to that, uh, the fees in terms of in terms of uh, uh, what you what you pay at the deck is actually something that is pretty reasonable considering of uh, starting at NTU and do it the other way around. Uh, so fees are more an investment on uh, on what you will be a transformational manager, somebody who will design and lead the world into a new into a new era, not just a fee to buy a degree. Okay, so to summarize, fees are not a cost, they're an investment. Yeah. Okay, Tina, can you tell us how did you feel about that? And like, how did you invest during those four years? Sure. So um, actually, there's also a point I want to mention is that at EDEC, you can get scholarships based on um, your profile, like on the first year when you get accepted in the school. So I was lucky enough to get a scholarship. 
Um, so that kind of helped me too. Um, yeah, and I would say I chose this program. I, I saw the cost and I know the, the fees are, uh, it's something, but as Angela said, it's an investment. And when I, 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 we know the campuses, for example, in the US, one year in the US is very expensive and we pay all the money goes directly to edX. So we don't pay any campuses, like we don't pay UCLA, we don't pay NT, we pay directly edX. And actually one year at UCLA is way more expensive than the fees we're paying for edX. So actually like for the experience we get, the the money we pay, is, it's, it's a pretty good deal actually. It's, it's, a, it's a good deal edX offers because at UCLA we get access to the campus, we get access to the gym, we get access to all the association and the campus life. And we don't have to pay a deck. We just, we don't have to pay UCLA, sorry. We have to pay a deck. So this is, this is actually a good deal. And that's also why I'm very happy uh, with the program. So that is a direct return on investment. Angelo, can you tell us how this program is assessed? Uh, as we said, is um, uh, students, uh, here link theory and practice so exams still are an important part because we would like to assess knowledge and to assess the academic rigor at the same time students are assessed into a variety of ways with uh, presentations team project why because ev in everyday life we work with other people we present to other people um, the consult mini consultancy projects, working with companies, uh, mini um, realization of projects. So students are assessed in a variety of ways. This is quite important because I always know, met in my experience, some students who are very strong at exams, but others that are better in presentation or in doing something more practical. This uh, variety of assessment, which is now kind of the norm in international education, uh, allows students to get uh, to present their strength to play on their strength yes in some exams i might be at a difficulty but in other areas i might be able to bring up what i do have why i am amazing uh, what i am amazing at doing and uh, and allows also to develop skills because if you have to prepare a video for your professor you will actually have to learn uh, with the help of our library how to do a video a professional video how to shoot one and how to uh, edit and present it Tina, did you have to write a dissertation or a thesis? Um, I'm actually doing it right now. I'm doing my bachelor thesis. And so, but it's actually, it's kind of interesting. It's not just like we choose a topic and we have to write 40 pages on it. No, it's actually, we're working with a company that needs, uh, that has an issue or that has a problematic that needs to be solved. Uh, right now I'm uh, working for Schneider Electric in uh, Singapore. So it's a pretty big um, company. And yeah, we need to help them in finding solution in different areas. Um, there are the problems they are facing and uh, it's a team project actually. We are five members and we need to uh, write a bachelor thesis. So it's uh, 20, 30 pages actually. And then we need to present it in front of a jury. Okay, that's okay. So that's a very concrete. It's not just like just theory, the theory and practice. All right, very interesting. Yeah. Angelo, how have you adapted your courses to the current situation? Will I still be able to go study abroad? Okay, so uh, two different questions there. One is yeah. what have we done so far and what we will be doing in the future? So what we've done so far was uh, we're business experts, so we plan. Uh, so uh, uh, every time we do have um, a plan B or a plan C in case some events might happen. So for example, in the global business, we always looked at the opportunity to that um, uh, a crisis, international crisis or uh, other things could have stopped uh, students going to UCLA or to Singapore. Um, at the same time, yeah, we did not uh, fully predict a global pandemic uh, where all things happen at the same time. But what happens is that we always had as a plan B the opportunity to deliver classes in a hybrid method. And this is what we've been doing. All our professors were always trained on working as well with digital expert, with digital uh, content. We do have at EDEC a dedicated unit called PyLab that helps professors in transforming uh, their contents into online productions. And so that has facilitated a lot of the transition to a hybrid model. Uh, hybrid means the students were still able to be to have class contents, 
uh, but with some sessions delivered more online. Um, what we've done plus uh, was to actually create a some series of events uh, online for students to participate, to still be part of the family, uh, like talks from managers, for example, or uh, extra certifications the students can take. And uh, we looked at uh, enriching the experience as much as we uh, as much as we could. And remember, you know, we always like a personal touch. So there has always been uh, constant contact within faculty, uh, program direction, and students. For the future, uh, remember, if you come and study in Lille, all your uh, all your years will be uh, in Lille with the opportunity of a student exchange. So you will be able to go and study overseas for a semester. If you are in the global business track, you will come in Nice for the first year, then you will go to UCLA in the second year, and then on to, to Singapore. So this means that you will come and study Nice for the first year, where again, we are looking, if the situation doesn't change next year, uh, a hybrid method of delivery, and then uh, UCLA will be in September 2022. At this stage, it's quite difficult. Uh, let's hope COVID will not be present in, seven, in September 2022. Um, but we are looking again at opportunities to look at hybrid solutions if the situation will still be uh, like this. Tina, did you, notice, did, uh, did you notice any change during the pandemic? How was your experience as a student? Um, actually, I was pretty impressed by, um, the, by EDEC and what it did because I and nothing has changed for me. I I did my first semester at uh, NTU. The only thing that changed were my exams were online. I came back for um, in France during the summer, and I was able to come back to Singapore and finish my studies here. With I just needed the the visa and the paper from the government, and EDEC uh, did all the the work for that, the paperwork, and I was able to come back. Uh, we have the option to come back to Singapore or follow the classes online. So um, at the moment, half of our class are now in Singapore and the other half decided to stay in France. And everything is recorded. We can have all the lectures online. So it's, it's really well organized. Okay, thank you. You keep mentioning like different strikes. There is like business management strike, there is a, a global business strike, and there's also like an online strike. Angelo, could you help us? Um, could you tell us where, what are the differences between all those tracks and when do I know which one I want to choose? So the all international BBA has different tracks, different opportunities. So one is the traditional in uh, business management in, Fran in French uh, that is offered both in Nice and in Lille where students spend four years with uh, with a deck with the opportunity of an academic exchange uh, the uh, overseas and the program is in french uh, with uh, again uh, same contents as uh, as everybody else in terms of english as we're focusing here today on the english uh, we will have the opportunity to do business management in english so in lille four years in english with the opportunity to have a uh, academic exchange and a visit overseas or to do the global business. Uh, the global business track is the uh, boutique uh, program where um, Tina is part of. In this case, students will do one year in Nice, one year in UCLA, uh, Los Angeles, one year in uh, Singapore. And uh, within these three experiences, students will do three internships, one month, five months, and six months at the end. And that will allow them to, uh, again, have an opportunity to link theory and practice and to have real life experience. The, we do have also a fully online, uh, a fully online version of the program. Uh, this is mainly oriented for students who are professional athletes or for students that for health reasons cannot be participating uh, uh, physically to, uh, to, to classes or to, or to at all attend school normally. Uh, and as uh, Tina mentioned earlier on, there is the opportunity for scholarships for students, uh, especially if you come from a difficult background, especially if you are a good student. So uh, there are opportunities we are proud to actually offer a, a lot of scholarships for students from a uh, difficult background or for students that are really showing how they have an amazing potential to become transformational leaders. Okay, thank you very much, Angelo. I believe that 
a picture speaks more than a thousand words, and that's what we're going to discover with Who Am I? All right, Angelo, Tina, I'm gonna introduce you to three different pictures that you're gonna, and you're gonna tell me which one, according to you, is the one who fit the most, the international BBA at EDEC, all right? So I'm waiting for the three pictures to appear. The first one is Bernard Arnault, a very, a French, a very famous French entrepreneur. Uh, he's the, the CEO of LVMH. We have Michelle Obama. Um, well, I'm sure you've, like, she is the, um, the, the famous wife of uh, Barack Obama. And uh, we have uh, Mario, who is a famous uh, video game character. Maybe Tina will let you choose which one of the three, according to you, would fit uh, Lidec and like Edec uh, mentality. And then Angelo, you will have to pick another one. Okay, so um, Mario is more like the fun character, so I won't probably, I will not choose him. But maybe Bernard Arnault, um, he's a famous business man. Um, if I'm correct, he's a... Um, He's, a, he's the CEO of LVMH, right? Yes. And uh, so it's a, a, a global, uh, it's an MNC, it's a multinational corporation. Um, they're selling their product in the entire world and different, uh, different continents. Um, this can be a great match uh, for a program which is present internationally and it's a business person. So he could have studied at EDEC actually. <laughs> I will discover if he has or if he hasn't. Um, Angelo? Uh, when uh, you put the picture of Mario, I thought you were referring to me for a second. Uh, I wasn't. I uh, swear I wasn't. Italian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually Mario, uh, in the global business, students do like a bit of Mario, so hopping between countries, uh, looking for their success. Uh, but I will say, you know, Michelle Obama for one um, for one particular reason. We do have a very large number of uh, f female students. Uh, women are very important uh, for transformational, for uh, for uh, um, radical transformation across society. Uh, women are always led transformations, uh, and Michelle Obama is has been putting, has been inspiring a lot of other women into thinking about that. Um, we had last year, you know, in Singapore, uh, she was uh, present at the American Chamber of Commerce. We had some students from our program uh, participating in the in the talk with her, and, um, and and this was actually what came out. You know, the 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 the, the women uh, students who participated in the talk, they said, you know, I I really feel inspired about going out there and doing something new, something radical, some change, uh, and I think it's very important because. Uh, someone very wise once said, uh, one time said, if you uh, educate a woman, you will educate a nation to change. Uh, and that is actually what we will hope to do. All right. Well, the reason why I picked uh, the three characters, Bernard Arnault, is because I think Delphine Arnault, his daughter, she studied at EDEC. That's why I picked him. Um, Michelle Obama is because uh, your, your motto would be make an impact. And I believe that Michelle Obama made quite an impact, as you mentioned. And Mario was because um, you have, um, we have a French company very famous, which was called uh, Ubisoft. And the, the founder of Ubisoft came, they come from uh, Lidec, and that's why I picked the three characters. So they were all related to Lidec directly, indirectly. So I guess uh, LV, uh, Bernard Arnault didn't study it, but his daughter does. And I believe that the CEO of Louis Vuitton is studying, studied there as well. So it was uh, all linked. Thank you for, for your answers. Um, uh, what is a career center, Angelo? Oh, so um, as I said, at IDEC, oh, we're like a family. And uh, as an Italian, I know the importance of family. Uh, so students, when they join, they spend time studying. Uh, with the professors, with the faculty members, they always have, they are at the center of a network of support. So they have the program direction. Uh, so I'm one of the directors within the uh, international BBA. Uh, so I'll uh, arrange for students uh, 
guidance in terms of opportunities to talk with managers, opportunities to develop their personal branding and their career. But then we also do have a campus life manager that helps students with a better, uh, with associative life, with integrating with other students. And we do have as well a career center. So a group of highly qualified professionals who help students uh, applying and finding their internships across their program. Remember, they, they have to do, um, you have to do internships during the, during your study. But at the same time, it helps uh, students, help everyone in order to develop uh, a set of skills and qualities and to enrich their CV. So mock interviews, opportunities to uh, learn new tools, opportunities to participate in workshops and seminars on uh, how to better prepare your LinkedIn profile, how to better prepare your pitch interviews, how to better prepare your, uh, um, your negotiation techniques. So the Career Center is a network of professionals who are there to support and help you in finding an internship, finding a job, but overall preparing yourself for the future. Tina, have you had any use of this career center? Yes, actually, um, I use it for every year. For, for the first year, uh, in, I had the opportunity to uh, meet someone uh, who could help me with uh, writing my CV, my cover letter, uh, my resume uh, for um, my internship uh, interviews. So that was nice. And you also have the opportunity to um, uh, have an appointment with someone from the Carey Center to do a mock um, interview, so that's, that's pretty useful. Even in the US, I had someone that came and um, visited the class and we had like one hour each with her and she was helping us to adapt our CV to the market because the CV in France is different than a CV in the US and the same in Singapore. We have someone in Singapore that help us to adapt our CV to the Singaporean market and to the Asian market in general. Uh, so that was pretty useful. And also when I applied for internship um, on uh, the EdTech uh, website, there is an online directory with uh, close to 50,000 alumni. And we have their uh, email address. We have their LinkedIn profile. We have their position of every um, of your students at EdTech. And actually, um, I used it to find an internship uh, in Asia. So that was pretty useful. So LEDEC is all about theory practice and helping you practice. I have, yeah. however, Angelo, I have um, a question, uh, not an issue, but I would say Nice and Lille don't come across as mm -hmm. very international cities. Is that international enough to be studying an international BBA? Uh, I would disagree about that. Uh, Obviously. Look, nice, <laughs> no, in the sense that uh, Nice, uh, Lille, sorry, is the heart of Europe. You know, uh, you in one hour by train, you are in uh, in London. In the uh, Opel de TGV, you are in Brussels or in, um, in Paris. Uh, is the crossroad of a lot of uh, development and a lot of, uh, of opportunities. And it's a great student city, you know, students are able to connect, create opportunities, wide, wide professional uh, networks. Nice uh, in France is the balcony of France, the Côte d'Azur on the Mediterranean. So, uh, you know, if you look at the faculty here in Nice, the faculty as well is in Lille, uh, all professors are international. They come from all over the world and they studied all over the world. I'm Italian, I studied in uh, the US uh, and uh, uh, now I work in France, for, uh, for example, just to mention you know, my case. And Nice um, is, uh, has Sophia Antipolis next door, which is the biggest technopole, the biggest technology center in Europe with over 500 companies, technological companies. So there are uh, professionals from everywhere in uh, India, uh, uh, Qatar, you know, everybody, every, every country working here. Uh, so uh, has a big international exposure, has an opportunity to meet people from uh, the different places. Uh, and uh, in the global business, uh, students also have the opportunity to work in Los Angeles and live in Los Angeles and to uh, study in Singapore. But also they can choose their internships, one of the three internships or all three in any other country. So we have students who have done uh, an internship in Japan and the other one in, uh, uh, in Korea and the third one in Argentina. So they are able to actually create a truly international uh, 
uh, a network, a truly international portfolio of experiences. So now that, you, now that you've convinced me that lead and needs are international enough, Tina, can you tell us how is the student life in Lille or in Nice or in the, the international BBA? So um, I can maybe explain, explain like year for every year, like my first year was at Lille actually. And um, the student life at Lille is kind of amazing. There are like hundreds of associations. Um, I was part of the debate uh, club. Um, so that was really nice. And you are all mixed up, all different years. You're not only first years together. It's like second year, third year. We're all mixed up in a club. Um, the campus is huge in Lille. And maybe that's why it's in Lille and not Paris, because they have this opportunity to have a huge campus. Um, so that's a really good point. I, and that's really what I liked at Lille. Uh, for LA, um, we are part of UCLA. We are UCLA students. And it's really like an American dream, like the university campus is amazing. There are like hundreds and hundreds of associations, sport association, but it can also be like, um, you can choose whatever, like it can be like drama association, theater, uh, MUN, debate association. Uh, if you want to do a fundraising association, you can also join one. Um, I personally join um, a sorority, which is a very typical American uh, organization. And this was really, I, I was one of the only international students and it was really a good way for me to, um, yeah, know more about the culture and know more about American students, how they live their experience. So I felt really like I was part of the campus, like I was part of the UCLA campus. And for NTU, there are also a lot of association. Um, we are um, we are considered like an NTU student, and I decided to join the uh, running team. So it's once a week, and it's nice because there are Singaporean, there are other expats or international uh, students like me, and it was a good way to meet different people and just run around the campus together, and then have a nice time after with some drinks. Yeah. So the student life in this international BBA is like. Uh, you have one student life uh, different each year and then it just makes your you know your personal networks grow bigger and bigger it's not just like you're in one place it's, you just make friends a bit all around the world and that's how you just develop your your personal network is that how we could summarize it yes totally um i have friends now in lille i have friends in la i have friends in singapore and i still maintain the contact with them and i actually visited like in February for my vacation. I went two weeks in LA to see my friends again. And yeah, so it's a way of making friends in the entire world and having contacts, but also it can be business connection in the future. All right, very, very quickly, uh, Angelo, what do we do? What kind of job can we get once we've graduated from this international BBA? Okay, so um, 49,000 alumni in all positions. We do have students who uh, push to a master, specialize, and then they go, for example, into finance. Uh, students who will go uh, normally into global, uh, into a, a global um, dimension, 82% of our students get a job with an international dimension, either in France or overseas. Uh, or many students will tend to work with international organizations like the United Nations, for example. So where opportunities arise for people who have the international exposure. Uh, having done everything in English and with practice allows companies to uh, recruit immediately at ex students because they, as to quote one, they can hit the ground running. Uh, you know, one of the managers, they said, I love to hire uh, edX students because I, I can put them immediately to work. They know exactly what we expect from them. Um, so, yes, a wide variety of opportunities uh, with, uh, the op with the chance to personalize the, their own uh, path. Thank you, Angelo. I believe it's time to wrap up any loose ends. It's, ta it's time for extra time. We have two minutes left, one minute more than two minutes actually, and it's about telling us um, something new or maybe something that you want to emphasize on what has already been said. Angelo, what would you want to tell us before we finish this live? 
uh, that uh, uh, students will get, uh, as well as the International BBA, also a International Trade and Commerce Certificate for UCLA, from UCLA and an International Management Certificate from NTU as well as always having the support of our country managers in all countries. So people who are there to help and support the students all the time. And uh, uh, as someone said, uh, one of the students said before, be ready to take the first step. Uh, this program is all about getting on board uh, and then uh, you will be going through an amazing journey for four years. All right, Tina, any last word? Um, I would say that this program like amazed me by the way that I felt so included in every um, campuses I went to, um, LA for example or NTU. And um, the campus life is amazing. Like, I I don't think you can find that in France even. Like when you travel that much, when you see how it is in New Zealand and NTU, there's a huge gym. You can just the library is enormous too. Uh, you meet so many students easily. Um, there are so many activities on campus. Um, I think everybody would really love that, uh, people that are joining the program. But also, it's um, I would say that the profile um, that this program are, is looking for is for someone that is pretty open-minded, someone that is pretty outgoing, and also someone that is ready to, as Angeli said, push, it, push himself, push, push himself out of his comfort zone. Um, and then that's where the magic happened, right? So um, <laughs> by pushing yourself, you meet new people, you, uh, you join activities, you join association, and that's where you can make friends and really like feel included. Perfect, make an impact, push yourself. Before we finish this interview, we are gonna watch a very quick video of uh, this, the International BB of EDEC as a presentation. So now that if that, that we all want to go, that we all want to go to LEDEC International BB after watching this video, after hearing uh, Angelo, Tina, and that we're gonna, if you want to be part of an, um, a whole experience, a family experience, a familial experience, and it's about theory, it's about practice, it's about making you do the practice, growing your network, 
you should go to uh, the then you are a student that can apply to this international BBA thank you Angelo for answering all my questions thank you Tina as well uh, I hope you thank had you. a good time watching it and I hope to see you soon on Computer Channel.